And that kind of takes us right to our next question is, what happens if I do have, I lose a job? This one is, what happens if I lose a job after filing bankruptcy? And what happens if I get a job after filing bankruptcy? Separate things happen in Chapter 7. Let's start with um, a change of circumstances. If you got in a Chapter 7, we're looking at you kind of in a box. On the day of filing, were you working? Did you know you were going to lose your job? Did you know you were going to get a job? Those are things that have to be taken into consideration. But if you're not working on the day of filing bankruptcy, then your schedules, your schedule, your, in, your budget is going to show zero income with expenses, meaning that your expenses exceed your income. And that happens a lot. If, uh, you're gonna, if you file bankruptcy with knowing that you're going to make $100,000 next year because a job's coming three weeks after you file bankruptcy, that's a problem. There's no doubt about it because now you're trying to game the system. But the way it normally happens, excuse me, the way it normally happens is people file the bankruptcy and then their situation changes. Now that really doesn't matter in a Chapter 7. Let's say, for example, you're in a Chapter 7, you file, you're eligible for the 7 discharge. Three months later, before you get your discharge, you lose your job. Sorry, but it doesn't change the filing. You're still going to get your bankruptcy discharge. You're going to have to go out and get a job to meet your, uh, your family's financial expenses. So that's not really a huge issue. I think this question is focused more towards Chapter 13 because in Chapter 13, your repayment plan to the court requires you to have income of some sort. And if that income dries up or it goes away through job loss or something, huge problems come up. We have to go and amend the budget. We may be able to ask the court for permission to skip a few payments so that you have 90 days to go back and get into the job search, get back in it, but you don't have this extra financial obligation. So there's a lot of things we can do after the bankruptcy court uh, makes a determination what you require to pay, and then things change. Let's say, for example, you get a better job, well, but it requires you to drive back and forth from uh, Fort Myers to Naples. And now all of a sudden you've incurred additional gas expenses, which are kind of eating up that, um, that extra money coming in, but it has better future prospects. No problem. We have to file a new budget with the court showing that you have additional income from a different employer. But then I also want to see all the additional expenses that go with it. So we show the court, look, we want to keep this payment of about X amount of dollars a month because even though they have additional income there, now their expenses are a little bit higher. And that's okay too, but you always want to be, keep the court aware of what your current financial condition is so that they don't believe that you're trying to game the system. Again, bankruptcy, you're going to get all the benefits of the bankruptcy discharge and the bankruptcy code, but you've got to be fair and honest with the bankruptcy code. Bankruptcy is for the honest but unfortunate debtor, and that's really important. As long as you're upholding all the things that you're required to do, the court is not going to withhold any type of relief that you're seeking just to punish you. Bankruptcy court's not about punishment, it's about equality. It gives you an opportunity to get back on your feet and build, and it gives your creditors an opportunity to receive a fair distribution from your assets of the estate. That's really what it comes down to. So when you think about bankruptcy, it's kind of a do a balancing act. What's fair to the creditors, what's fair to the debtor. And that's really where the bankruptcy court falls into. I've always said it's a court of logic. Bankruptcy judge can't, if you're making $1,200 a month, they can't make you pay $1,000 a month to your creditors. It doesn't work. So the judge always has to weigh the equities, what's fair to the debtor, what's fair to the creditors. And if it's not fair, then something's going to have to give sooner or later. In other words, you can't keep a $100,000 boat and say, well, I need it, and not be willing to pay your creditors something. So it makes sense.